Hi guys, I promised to paint colour swatches of the old Holland watercolour paint. So that's what I'm going to do now and I'm going to make sure you can um, be a witness of that just like um, the Daniel Smith that I filmed a couple of months ago. Um, what I need to say about this is that the old Holland paint remains very sticky. Um, I think it's got a lot of honey in there and um, so it will never dry up completely um, so you always have to close your pellets um, because dust is already collecting in this plastic pellet um, and you don't really want that um, so I'm gonna let this dry for a couple of days in um, in my storage uh, space um, that's shut off from dust and um, then it's going to be hard enough to close the palette. It's not dry yet, um, so the colour will come off very easily. And um, I think this is the brand with the most dense pigment. You need very little paint to, um, to get a lot of bright colour. But I can talk about that. But better than talking about that, I think, is to just show you um, what it's like. Um, keeping a little bit of kitchen towel at hand. <clears throat> and here we go. Um, we're starting with B12, Scheveningen Yellow Light. And as you can see, it's very, very strong in colour. Old Holland is a brand that not everybody likes because um, many people find it difficult to control because it's so incredibly bright, so densely coloured, so densely pigmented. This is D15, Scheveningen Yellow Deep. It's like a golden egg yolk yellow and it's very beautiful. What I did for, I bought um, quite a few new colors and I'm really curious uh, how they'll behave because so far the colors I had in my collection did not granulate a lot at all. So I'm really curious whether these colors will. This is Indian Yellow Brown Lake Extra. And <laughs> the dog just walks in. Hey, Silka. <clears throat> so you can see this two very potent colors. This one does seem to granulate a bit. Or I'm not sure if it's granulation or the other. Um, there is, a, I don't know what's the other name called again. Well, I do see the structure of the paper in there. Now C145, Coral Orange. And this I know because this is an old colour I already had. This is incredibly um, bright. It's a, a red I am using a lot of water with this paint, much more than I would with any other brand. Um, and still I get very vibrant colours. Scheveningen Red Light. I, well, I am very crazy about the Scheveningen Red Deep, so I couldn't resist. Oh, that's lovely. Look how lovely that is. gorgeous. Very strong colours. I love it. I love it very much. Now Scheveningen Red Deep. It 
this is an old and familiar color but I'm just very curious yeah I can see it's more like wine red sort of hmm I love the Scheveninger red light Ruby Lake is the next C178 This one um, feels very much like the Sennelier paints. Um, the opacity is the same. The color power, I think, the potency of the color, I think, is even more vibrant, more is even stronger, I believe. E29 Scheveningen Rose Deep. Oh, that's a beautiful magenta. I think I have a very similar colour by Schminke. Only the difference, or difference, I'm not sure, but. This is so smooth. Such great colours. Then a C184 Royal Purple Lake. Royal Purple Lake. Okay. I would have expected a different, it's more like um, a, a red beet, a beetroot kind of red purple. It's gorgeous, beautiful color. C196 manganese violet blue and I'm a little it, this looks kind of gross in in the palette I have to say and also this um ew, paint is getting stuck in my brush manganese violet blue I don't really see the blue in this Yuck. I don't see what is this um, I have to say that um, this color I bought uh, quite a few of these um, colors from somebody who bought full stock from uh, a shop that went bankrupt and I don't like this color um, this was old in the tube I had to squeeze it out it was really really hard so um, I'm not sure if this is the colour as it should be. C202 Dioxazin Mauve. That's a really strong colour. And I actually do see some structure in the paint, but whether I can call that granulation, I'm not sure actually, because it's not like in other brand, it, it's much finer. The colors, when they dry up, become much more even than with the other brands that I have. So I'm not sure I can speak of granulation here. Then we have the B208 Old Holland Violet Grey. and. In the palette, it looks exactly like the B253 King's Blue Deep. So I'm really, really curious about this. Oh, I think it actually really does look a lot like the King's Blue Deep. Um, although the King's Blue Deep may be more transparent, but um, it's just a light blue, basically. Violet grey. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to see the difference. Then C241, Manganese Blue Deep. That's a beautiful colour. It does, this one seems to granulate. Yes, this one actually really granulates. Can you see that? 
the manganese blue deep really really clearly granulates and i love it <laughs> i love it very much then we move on to the b253 king's blue deep and i don't think it's going to be very different from the old holland violet gray although it, well it's a little bit more Um, transparency is the same. No, I don't see much difference there. It, although I have to say it granulates. Yay! This one granulates as well. Look. Now we move on to the Scheveningen Blue, which is B40 Scheveningen Blue Light. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at this. How bright do you want your light blues to be? <laughs> this is light blue as it should be. That's wonderful. This is the most beautiful light blue that I've got, I have to say. Without a doubt. Very vibrant. Um, beautiful. Not granulating, but very, very, very beautiful. I still love the manganese blue deep by the way because the granulation is really really outspoken so that is a color that you can use for so many things okay we move on to b229 blue lake oops now we are getting to the very intense colors oops and it's gorgeous, beautiful, rich blue color. Then we move on to C223 Old Holland Blue. And this one also was very dry when I took it out of the tube, but look how vibrant this is. This is like it's like applying um, a varnish or something. It's it's got a very it's got transparency, but the vibrancy of the color is just overwhelming. A thirty six ultramarine blue. Oh, that's funny. That looks more like the cobalt blues that I have. Of other brands it's not as deep as um, oops some other ultramarine blues that I have of other brands but look at it go it is granulating so that's kind of cool then we move on to a color I already owned the B35 Scheveningen blue Scheveningen, by the way, is uh, a little town um, on the North Sea in the Netherlands. And it's, n it's very near The Hague. And this one actually looks a lot like um, Old Holland Blue, only it's more greenish. And it seems a little bit more vibrant than the Blue Lake, which also looks like it. <coughs> Okay, moving up. Old Delft Blue. And it promises to be very, very dark. Yep, oh wow. Oh, look at that. Here we've got a perfect night sky. Um, by the way, I had my paint too thick and then it smears like honey rather than work like watercolor paint <clears throat> that is a beautiful night sky color of blue okay so we're moving on to Payne's gray which usually is uh, a bluish kind of gray or 
Oh, this is really grey grey with a touch of jeans blue. No, this is really grey. And it's granulating. Then we move on to Old Holland Blue Deep, which on the color chart, on the printed color chart, looks exactly like the paint's gray. So, oh, but it's different. It's much more intense um, going to black, and it indeed, it contains more blue. Well, that's a lovely night sky as well. I love night skies, can you tell? Then, B265, Turquoise Blue Deep. That's one of the colours that look, um, it's incredibly um, vibrant and incredibly <laughs> um, full of pigments and in watercolour um, illustrations or art, um, colours like these, um, even when you add quite a bit of water, are incredibly vibrant and that's why some people don't like it. It's it's an in-your-face kind of colour. This entire brand is pretty much in your face and I love it, but um, not everybody does, I'm afraid. We're moving on to Scheveningen Green Deep. And this is a colour I hardly use. Um, the only reason I buy it is to um, to make sure that I have a good range of colours when I want to mix. Um, but this is simply just a colour that doesn't really fit my um, my colour scheme. Um, then we have the C298 Old Holland Golden Green Deep. And that one is um, a beautiful golden colour. I have a schminky colour that's, I think, pretty much pretty similar. And this is a colour I use a lot in combination with magentas, like in this case, the Schevening Rose Deep. Then B283 Old Holland Yellow Green. Um, this is um, the Kermit green. <laughs> this is a, a, a kind of green you you will only find in nature in spring when, um, when plants are just beginning to grow leaves again. And as you can see the colour flow through the water, you can see that the colour remains incredibly intense, although I'm picking up um, I'm not picking up very much colour. So um, I hope that with this colour swatch I can show you the intensity of the colours. That really is outstanding. B292 Sap Green Lake Extra. This is a colour I hardly, I, I, I don't use that much green. And well, this seems like pretty classic, though vibrant sap green. Um, although the the in, it's not a very intense colour, not like many of the others. Then we move on to A three ten green umber. Ooh. It's a very grey and dull colour and um, looking at this I think I would use this as um, a shading colour. I think it would work perfectly for shading. By the way I didn't choose um, a, a set of colours that is a perfect combination for mixing or anything. Um, I simply um, chose from a wide range of colours uh, that came out of uh, a bankruptcy and the, this were the these were the colours that were available and I picked the best ones 
or that I thought were the best ones. So this is not a very balanced palette that I advise you to buy. This is simply what I've got right now and um, um, what, I, what I'm going to be working with. This is a colour I had and this is quite unique. This is olive green dark and it is a very dark olive green, um, very earthy and leafy or fruity at the same time and I love it. Um, olive green is one of the colours that I use in my work a lot and um, I think it's lovely. It's very different than any other brand's olive green and um, well I'm pretty pretty smitten smitten about it or smitten with it smitten with it I think right B115 flesh tint um, this is a difficult color I find it's very intense and um, when I work with um, watercolor I find these um, pre-mixed flesh tints a bit intense so I mix the colors myself um, although having said that when I when you dilute the paint as you can see here um, the colors are actually really really good you can work straight from the tube but it does require a bit of searching before you get um, to the proper dilution the next skin tone that I have is Naples yellow red and this is um, old leather ballet shoe pink everyone who's been who was on ballet when they were young knows this color beautiful color by the way okay final row bottom row <clears throat> a five seven raw sienna deep yeah well, i had to count to make sure i was oops picking the wrong color uh, the wrong color the right color raw sienna deep well this too is very vibrant very richly pigmented Then A68 deep ochre and it doesn't seem like ochre at all here, it seems like a very deep brown. Oh, I had expected a much more vibrant and intense colour but in fact this is not a very vibrant and intense colour. It looks incredibly dark on my palette but so this would seriously be a colour for nature tones to um, to use for trees and foliage and shading. It's a colour I think I would use as a secondary layer on top of if I'm painting trees. This is sort of a glazing layer I think I would use. I expected a more a more vibrant colour, a more vibrant brown. We're moving on, I think, to a much more vibrant colour, which is A71 Warm Sepia Extra. And you know something, I don't really see the sepia in this. I don't know why they call it sepia, probably because they use a pigment. Um, but normally, with every other brand that I have, I always have sepia. And, um, well, here it says warm sepia, because it's almost uh, a red colour. It, it's just, it's a brown, but sepia to me is usually brown heading to black and this one is brown heading to red with a red inclination can you see that does paint have an inclination c325 old holland yellow brown oh that's um that's a beautiful ochre color i love this very vibrant I will use this a lot for sand, for costume. I love it. It's a beautiful colour. You can see that the raw sienna is, is much less vibrant than um, the old holland yellow brown, which is normal, it should be. Um, 
but um, the difference in that is that I would use this, the Raw Sienna Deep, again in a more natural setting for the backgrounds, for landscapes, and the Old Holland Yellow Brown I would use for probably costume and, you know, some um, really bright high highlights in, in, in the environment that I'm painting. A343 Flesh Ochre. I have no idea what to expect. I've never had a flesh ochre. I have to let you in on a, on a personal preference, but I don't like Indian red or flesh ochres. This is sort of a, a, a nun color. I mean, it isn't red and it isn't brown and it isn't flesh colored. But I have to see if I can find a use for this. Um, I don't know why I chose this colour, by the way. I have to think about that. <laughs> Probably I was trying to um, to purchase a colour that I didn't have already. Um, because I find that the more I paint, the more colours I want to have. Um, then we're moving on to A65 Persian or Indian, between brackets, red. And this is a colour I didn't choose. Um, I chose another colour, an ochre, um, a burnt ochre, and um, I got this one instead. Um, the lady made a mistake, and um, I hate Indian red. I also hate English red. It's colours that I never, ever, ever use, and I don't intend to. However, um, I felt it was too much of a bother to send it back, so I figured that I will buy the other, co the other colour when I... Um, into an art supply store that sells them and see if I can do anything with this color as a personal challenge to myself and I do have an idea with this color because for some reason combining with the turquoise it immediately makes me think of a Mexican setting and um, well maybe I can let that inspire me someday now I'm going to um, take a colour I would I, I never bought before which is Old Holland Warm Grey Light it's um normally I mix all my greys because why would you buy a grey but just look at it and you probably get why I bought this this is like a titan buff and the reason I'm I bought this is because I've been working with acrylic paints a lot lately and I find that um, when I want to work with muted colours, with a limited colour palette, then I like using Titan Buff a lot. Um, so I got this. And I have to say, if you, um, you can mix all kinds of grey very easily, but as you can see, this is not really a grey. This is more like sort of the Naples yellow, but then a little more greyish or something. So... Um, if you want consistency in colour, then it can be useful to buy a whole tube. And now the last colour of this colour chart, A73 Scheveninger Warm Grey. I already own this colour, so I know what it's going to look like. And it is indeed a warm grey. This is a lovely colour for shading. Um, it's vibrant, but it's not too pushy. So you can very easily use it as an extra layer for shading. Right, let's zoom out. <clears throat> so, here is the Old Holland Classic Watercolours colour chart of all the colours that I own. And um, as you see with the colour swatches, um, mine are not evenly coloured and I do that on purpose. I always mix in rather a lot of water to see what happens and what you can see here at this colour is you can see sort of a coral structure at the top where the water meets the paint. So adding in a lot of water just gives me information about how the paint behaves and it helps me to pick the paints or maybe not to pick the paints because I'll pick a colour when I like it anyway but it will help me um, look at how I should treat the colour. 
Um, I also have a very, very good example of um, of the um, of the reason why some people don't like, especially people who um, like to make uh, naturalistic watercolors. Um, as you can see here, this Scheveningen blue um, rectangle dried up pretty evenly and incredibly vibrant. And I didn't use quite, I didn't use too much paint there. Um, this is just um, something the paint does. Just look at this color. The Old Holland Yellow Green does exactly the same. The Royal Purple Lake does exactly the same. The Scheveningen Red Light. Um, it is a very vibrant brand of color with incredible amount of pigment um, in it and I don't know if it is just the amount of pigment uh, used or that they grind it to such a fine consistency that it really spreads evenly over the page but for illustrative work this type of paint is absolutely perfect if you love vibrant colors then this is the brand that, that, that I can highly advise you to take you're going for more naturalistic, I'm not sure, but I have to say I'm not a naturalistic uh, watercolour painter, so you would have to um, go to wet canvas or some other place where there's a lot of painters and you can ask for their uh, experiences with this paint. So I hope you enjoyed it, thank you for watching and um, see you again next time. I've got a lot of paint uh, ready for more videos, so um, see you again soon. Bye.